Interpreting poses an unusual opportunity to favor decisions based on random knowledge or lack thereof, which equals what could be considered intuitive choices. Notions of perception, cognition, and perhaps invention are at the center of this particular curatorial experiment, as the missing aspects are research and prior knowledge of the artists and their work. Any circumscribed experiment precludes certain standards so that others can be foregrounded. While curatorial practice involves intellectual rigor, it is also highly subjective and implies relationships and interaction. In the field of contemporary art in particular, the notion of a distant, objective curator seems increasingly outmoded. This project potentially reveals this premise. That stated, I would begin by saying that my favorite approach to curating exhibitions is to look at artists' work and select what interests me most given only the loosest parameters making it my task to construct a thesis or set of relations directly based on the work I've chosen. I think that themes are best demonstrated by varying relationships between artworks rather than through stating an all-encompassing didactic premise which often renders artworks examples for a particular argument. I like to ramble a bit from my topic. Convincing shows for me seem to begin with a curator's recognition and development of certain connections from which the exhibition concept emanates, rather than starting with a concise idea and seeking works to demonstrate it. An adequate starting point for me usually represents a kind of inseparability between aesthetic and thematic concerns. Interpreting approximates my preferred method, but scarcely provides the essential longevity of relationship with an artist's work that seems a prerequisite for coming up with an exhibition. It has drawn my attention in particular to my own reliance on artists and their ideas to develop exhibitions. Without their input, it's difficult to feel thorough in my understanding of their work and to recognize the specificity of my interpretations versus theirs or another viewer's. I admit that my first choices were works by artists with whom I'm already familiar. As someone who often collaborates on exhibitions, this project also poses an unusual curatorial collaboration as the first selection, so to speak, has been made by another curator whose decisions impact my own. This moves the discussion away from the traditional articulation of a single curatorial view with its undertones of individual taste or connoisseurship. Also inherent to the initial structure of this experiment and its pr proposed randomness is the establishment of a chain of relations at most rather than an even terrain of equal relations. This is to say that there will be outer limits that do not necessarily meet and idiosyncratic decisions that can only be understood as such. This is not unlike the problematics set up by curators whose critical approach is open-ended and designed to reflect the present cultural moment by drawing on the incongruity of sources and influences that comprise contemporary artistic practice. Recent exhibitions posit themes that are not inherent to the sphere of art but seek affinities with fields outside. Exhibitions based on media, technology, personal relations, history, for example, are as common as exhibitions on painting or sculpture and seek to position art within the context of current modes of production and communication. My initial selection of works hovered around various forms of American iconography that were immediately apparent in the works such as the Afro, JFK, MLK, The Road, Mickey Mouse, institutional and domestic decor. These images have specific cultural significance, but I think my attraction to them is also rooted in the time and place in which I grew up. For example, Heim Steinbeck's pairing of Mickey and American flag glasses in its patriotic manner struck a sinister chord and does so even more when viewed in relation to works by Renee Green and Carrie James Marshall. The torn off arm of my mother's couch implies a kind of suppressed violence, as do the tiled forms facing each other off in Maria Elena Gonzalez's untitled sculpture. I went with this logic of opposition for a while and then got interested in what I saw as some varying representations of masculinity, such as Collier Shore's Swedish soldier and Jennifer Bolandi's glove from Road Movie. 
Subsequent decisions became increasingly drifty, such as wanted another piece that was conceptual in nature or wanting to include a painting.